Hello, how are you doing? It's a privilege to be able to come to your houses today or to come and appear on your phones, tablets, um, listen over Mixed LR. I know God has been good to you. If you are privileged to be watching these or hearing these with somebody, I want to look at your neighbor and say, Happy lockdown. Happy lockdown. The person is not saying it well. You know, the Bible says, In all things we must rejoice. Scripture says, All things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are they called according to his purpose. Therefore, God is working certain things in my life, in your life, and is working it out even for our good. Today, I'm excited about the Word of God, and I know that this Word will change, transform, and will make you a better person. When God gave me this Word, I was excited in my being. And we are going to further on our conversation on the Conquest series. Last week, I began by speaking, by speaking to us on a subject titled, Think Like God. If you don't have the message, I want you to look for it, because I'm going to be building on that even today. So today, I have a message for you, and um, let's go to the Word of the Lord very quickly. I want to appreciate you if you're listening, uh, wherever you are, this world, this time we are in, it's a quite strange time, and it's an unprecedented time in the world, but that you can find time to listen to God's Word, I appreciate you, and I appreciate God's gift and grace upon your life. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, and then our anchor verse, Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. We honor God in our heart as we read the scripture even together. Eleven three of the book of Hebrews. I'll start. Scripture says, by faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. He was not framed by, by cement. It was not framed by, by copper or gold. Scripture says, by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Very quickly. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, second opening. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For a few minutes, I'll be speaking on talk like God. Look at your neighbor and say, talk like God. I mean, that person is not believing enough. Look at the next person and say, talk like God. Say to yourself, it is time. To begin to talk like God. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Because the entrance of the word gives light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come tonight to learn at your feet. Make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life even upon the spirit of man. Daddy, after now, let the reason for sending your word be fulfilled. After now, oh God, make us all better people. Let us walk according to your mandate for our life. We worship you, O oh God. Because we'll begin to walk even according to the mind of the divinity. Thank you, divine God. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to start by saying that we live in a world that is created and governed by words. Contracts are made. Agreements are made by people based on words. Based on words. Mutual agreement. You know, the power of God to create the word Bible told us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 was by his word. Everything you therefore see, everything that is established, is established based on the word of God. God literally said the things he wanted to see and the word became. I've seen several people travel based on words. They will say, it's, they, they call somebody and the president says, uh, oh, if you come to South Africa, I'll be able to get you a job. I have a job waiting for you. And they will leave Nigeria Based on the word of one person, they travel kilometers. Why? Because somebody said something. I know people who have read courses because someone, somebody somewhere told them that that is a great course to study. So they actually anchor their life based on what someone said. Amazingly, even the word you and I live in is built on words. Therefore, if the word is built by words, the word is also supposed to run even by words. Because what made a thing is what will also sustain the thing. So God made the heavens and the heart by his word. And if your life will also run according to the mandate of God for your life, you also must understand that your life will run on the fossil, on the fuel of the word. You must learn to speak words into your life. The Bible says in John chapter 1, 
from verses 1 to 3. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word itself was God. Verse 2 says, in the, He himself was in the beginning, even with God. And then I love verse 3. Verse 3 says, All things were made through Him. I tell us in our church that you should substitute that word Him and put the Word, because the Bible told us that Him was the Word. So you can read that verse by saying, All things were made through the Word. And without the word, nothing was made that was made. Hebrews, and you read verse 1, and Hebrews 1 and verse 3. Bible says he sustains the word by the power of his word. He sustains all things that sustain by the power of his word. The Bible told us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Bible says the things that were made were made. We understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen are not made from the things which are visible. When a man says a thing, when a man says something, you don't go to somebody and say, ah, this man said this. And the man says, oh, you have to prove it. You don't say, I, I will show it to you. This is not something that can be shown. You can see it. But it is very powerful. The force of words are awesome. They are powerful. The Bible told us in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3 that God said, in the beginning, God said, God says things. For six days in Genesis chapter 1, God created. And how did he do it? By speaking. By speaking. Somebody says, so how can I be sure God speaks? Because if you want to talk like God, the fundamental thing is to know, does God speak? So fundamentally from the book of Genesis, somebody has said that if you want to understand the word of God, then you must understand Genesis 1 to 4. Why? Because in those chapters of scriptures, many things were discussed. You will not understand how man is supposed to function if you don't understand the first four to first six books of the Bible. So scripture told us uh, that God said, he said, a light works. He said, light be, a light became. So the world we live in uh, became because God said. And scripture continued to talk to us about how God made the world. And scripture says, when God saw what he created, God said it was good. Allow me to ask you if your life is good. You know, that's a foundation, that's a very good question. Is your life good? Do you like the way your life is? Do you like how your life is panning out? It may therefore be that your life is where it is uh, because you are not speaking God's word. Because when God created the heavens and the earth, Scripture says he looked at it and he saw that it was good. Therefore, if your life is not good, it means that your life is not operating at the wavelength God expects it to operate by. Therefore, how do you change your life? You change your life by aligning your life to the methods of God. God speaks. Tell your neighbor, God speaks. Today, I want to consider, very simple message, today I want to consider two areas. Two areas, and then we'll be done. Number one, how does God talk? I want to look at the characteristics of God's talk. <laughs> you know, there, there's a very popular program, you, you, uh, some people know about it, it's called TED Talk. And in TED Talk, if you've looked at it, there's a way you talk, there's, there, are, there are modules, uh, there are plans, there are things you must follow in order to be given that platform or to be able to use that name. God also has ways, characteristics of, of how he talks. Therefore, it will be easy for us to align our life to his own because we understand that he speaks and how he talks. Then number two, I'm going to show us how can I talk like God? Because fundamentally, it is not important you know how I speak. <laughs> you have to know how, how to speak the way I speak. If the way I speak is important to my success, then you must study how I speak, yes, but you must also learn the principles so that you can talk the way I talk because that's how you can also get into that place of success. Therefore, it's not important to know how God talks. <laughs> it's important to know how you can talk like God because that is the secret to a successful life. Don't forget when we started this, I said that I got on this road because I was looking for answers to success in life and in ministry. And now, how does God talk? Number one, God speaks creatively. Anytime God speaks, it's creative. In the beginning, scripture says, you know, when you read Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, one thing you will see there is it introduces us to the person of God. And how was God introduced to us? As a creative God. Scripture says in 1 1 Genesis, in the beginning, God created. You see that? That means God is a creative God. And how is he creative? By his words. He spoke. 
Genesis 1-3, the works of creation started. He started speaking. So one thing God does is that God speaks creatively. Gen- Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Scripture also told us that the things which are made are not from the things which do appear. The word was framed by the word of God. The word. How did he frame the word? How did he make the cosmos? He made the cosmos by releasing his word. God's word is a creative force. It's not just when you read scriptures and you have an encounter with the word of God, you are not just quoting scriptures. You see, that's when I see people who want to cram the word of God, they are missing out in the fullness of the blessings of God. Because it is not about cramming it, it's about moving in the creative power that the word possesses. And you cannot move in the creative power it possesses until you get the spirit of the word. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. First thing, God speaks creatively. God's words are his creative force. Whenever he says a thing, it becomes so. He does not speak destructive word. He speaks creative word. Number two, God says what he wants to see. Amen. I love that. God says what he wants to see. Not what he's seen, but what he wants to see. God calls forth answers. When there is darkness, God does not interest or concerns himself about the darkness. God concerns himself about what he wants to see. Light. Have you read the scriptures and you ask questions? You know, to understand God and what is important to God. You need to read the book of Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says the earth was without form and void. And the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord just over us upon the surface of the earth. So the whole thing described not perfection but chaos. And I was surprised that the scripture, we only capture that with only one verse. If it was some of us, <laughs> he said, you see, as darkness covered the deep, People who are in the south could not go out. People who are in the west could not go to the market. There were a lot of demons all around. Verse 2, verse 3, the demons were having conference. And then verse 5, because of the demons, uh, sickness was upon the heart. And then verse 7, there was now a breakout of a plague in the year 2020. And so his name was, pande- was called COVID-19. And then verse 8, you see, you will be describing what is seen. But God only used just one verse to describe the state of the world. It therefore suggests to you that God is not interested in speaking about the chaos. God is only interested in speaking about the solution. You need to understand that whatever goes on in your life, it is not your business to state it. Why are you stating what is obvious to people? Oh, it's obvious you are not married. It's obvious you are not in school, except you are lying on Facebook. (laughs) <laughs> it's obvious you are not in a relationship except you put complicated I tell people there's nothing complicated in a relationship it's that you are there or you are not so you need to understand it's simple things God was not interested in saying hey, you know I'm not married because I don't have, I don't, I don't have good figures I, I, I don't have good character no God was interested in stating what he's saying and he didn't lie he stated it but what did God do he now spent the remaining verses talking about what he wants to see Therefore, in 24 hours, how much do you say? How much time do you spend talking about the things you want to see in your life? You know, in church, we don't answer questions. So now we've moved online. We don't need to answer that. It's in your heart. Number three, God speaks to the situation. When the world was in chaos, God didn't go around complaining. He spoke to the situation. He didn't call a pity party. The Bible says there was a conference who could listen to him in heaven. The Bible told us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. He said, let us make man. So there was an us in the heaven. There was a U.S. in heaven who could listen. Us. Let us make man. Many of us, we call friends and say, I failed you. I failed. That interview, I cannot be promoted. I cannot. There's no way they promote me. I didn't get one question right. Now, what are you doing? You are speaking contrary to the nature of God. God speaks to the situation. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. Bible says, uh, It caused the things that be not as though they were. There was no light. Light only existed in his mind. Listen to this. uh, There is no future. It only exists in your mind. Call it forth. Or somebody says, my purpose. Your purpose is in your mind. Your vision is in your heart. Your dream is in your heart. If you can see it, you can call it forth. Speak like God. Talk like God. Number four, God speaks clearly and expressly. 
His laws and commandments are clear. Someone has said, the words of God are very simple. It takes a man to complicate it. <laughs> Do you understand that? Have you ever seen someone preach and you are wondering, wow, wow. I mean, I don't understand this. Why? Because they have complicated it. Because they want to share mysterious mysteries. The words of God are clear. Scripture told us in Psalm 19 verse 5, his words, his commands are pure. They are pure. The commandments of God are not bodysome. First John chapter 5 and verse 3. So it's clear, it's simple. God's commands are clear. God speaks clearly. When God tells you a thing, you know that's what to do. When he told Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh and take Israel out. He was not telling him, go there and then serve for a little while and then I will come to you. No, he spoke to him expressly and clearly. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Spirit speaks expressly. That's the way God speaks. It's distinct, it's clear, and it's lucid. And then number five now. God speaks his vision and plan. So how, how does God speak? He speaks his vision and his plan. God's method is to tell a thing before it happens. Do you understand that? God's way of doing things is that he will tell you before it happens. God does not do a thing and he surprises the believer. God will have told you before he does it. He told Abraham, he said, will I do a thing without telling my friend Abraham? That means he was going to do a thing on the earth, but he said, before I would do those things, I must tell my friend. Why does God do that? Because God understands that immediately he speaks a word, the creative force to make it happen is already released. So he says it before he does it. Somebody will say in here, I'm going to say when I see it. Stop that. You need to start saying it now. God speaks his vision and his plan. Oh, remember when man said in Genesis chapter 3? Immediately, God said the seed of the woman, Genesis 3.15. He was already making plans for salvation. And he was not making it in his heart. He was speaking it. Is that not true? When he was going to also, talk, when he called Abraham, he said, I will make of you nations. He said the nation of the world will be blessed because of you. Why? God was planting that seed of his vision. God was speaking to him. When God speaks, he speaks his plans, he speaks his vision. And that's how God speaks. Sir. Oh, Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. The Bible says uh, God reveals things to his prophet. He tells secrets to his servant, even the prophet. Psalm 33 verse 11. The Bible says the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plan of his heart from generation to generation. Isaiah 14 and verse 24. The Bible says surely as I have taught, it will come to pass. Surely as he speaks, uh, it always comes to pass. Listen to me, dear ones. Uh, as God releases his words, Action follows. Why? Because the principle that the art of paid by is that whenever he hears a thing, forces are released to ensure that whatever is said comes to pass. Therefore, I tell people you are the greatest prophet over your life. If you say you can never make it in life, there's nothing anyone can do. Why? Because the force of nature will start a conspiracy together <laughs> to ensure that that negative word comes to pass. God speaks his vision. Number five, I think that's number, that's number five. Number six, God speaks life. God's word is full of life. God does not just speak, he speaks life. John 6 is three, the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Therefore, God does not interest himself about speaking about darkness, about evil things. God only concerns himself about speaking about life. In fact, it is impossible for God to speak any other way. Psalm 36 verse 9. Bible says with him, with God, is the fountain of life. Therefore, the any, if you find any life in the world, the source must be from God. He says he's the fountain, he's the source of life. Therefore, when God releases a word, his words are coming forth from the expression of his being. He's giving a part of himself because he himself is life. So whenever he speaks, he's releasing a portion of himself even to us. We must understand this truth. We must understand that God speaks life. John chapter 1 verse 4. In him was life. Amen. Glory to God. In God. In the word of God. You know that? I, I told us. When you see John 1, 1 to 12, when you see him, you must learn to interpret it as the word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 4, in the word of God was life, and the life was the light of men. So as much as you receive a word from God, you have received a seed of life into your life. Somebody said, God woke me up. I said, I'm calling you, and I'm sending you to the nations of the world. And I meet you on the road, and you are still looking spiritual. 
and you are looking, you know when some people, they say they are looking spiritual, but they are looking sad. And I'm thinking, ah, I thought you received a word of life. I thought he gave you a vision and a plan for your life. I thought he shared the fundamentals of creativity with you. That word may not look like it, but because God has said it, uh, the whole world will conspire to make what God says to come to pass. Amen. There must be a rejoicing in the abode of the righteous. Why? Because you receive a word from God. In as much as you find word, the word of God, you find life. If you don't have the word, you don't have life. Therefore, the most important thing for the believer is not the ability to pray. The most important thing for the believer is not the ability to blow tongues. The most important thing for the believer is not how long he has stayed in faith. The most important thing is to have a working word with the God. To have a working word with God. Anytime God has not spoken to me in three days, I ask myself, am I still in church? Am I still in church? Because life will not bubble if you don't have anything from the fountain. When you take from the fountain, you take from life. When you receive a word from God, it's like you have taken from the well of life. So every word he gives to you is the tangibility of life that is supposed to sustain you, not forever, for, for a while. Tell your neighbor for a while. For a while. For a while. Let's close this message. I've said it, I've established it, that God's word is the creative force that holds our world together. What joins all of this together? The word of God. Now I want to tell us, you know, I said it, two lines, two, two parts of this message. The first one, how does God speak? And then number two, I want to show us, how can I talk like God? Can we have very quickly on the screen Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1? Ephesians 5 and verse 1. The first thing, how can I talk like God? Look at that. Therefore, be imitators of God as what? As their children. Uh, the KJV says, therefore be followers of God as their children. I love the word imitators. You see, that word imitator in the Greek means to imitate someone. It means to copy. It means to play role. It means to act. It means to model a character after. Oh, to see someone and to begin to model your life after the person. So, another word for it is to mimic. I see people come to church and mimic Reverend Church, and they get it right. <laughs> Some people just happy and shaking, throwing their microphone, and people start laughing. Why? Because they are mimicking him. Now, Bible told us that it is expected for the spiritual man to mimic God. <laughs> Somebody say, As you mimic God. You take the way God speaks and begin to mimic it. That's the first thing. The first thing to talk like God is to practice God talk. To do what? To practice God talk. How do you do that? By mimicking God. Oh, so God said, let there be light. Or like the literal geek says, light be. And light became. So I also stand and I say, Lord, light be in the nations of the world. Light be in my life. Light be. In my business. What am I doing? Am I saying my own words? I'm mimicking God. I'm doing it exactly the way God will do it. It's time for believers to rise. We are supposed to be mimickers of God. Just start mimicking it. Ask yourself what will God do? What will Jesus do right now? And start doing it. It's time to get scriptures into your mouth. Repeat what God says. Speak scriptures out into your life. Say God's life and speak it. Because God's life is your life. Another way you can mimic God is to let your conversation reflect that of God. It must. Therefore, what am I saying? You will take all the seven things I shared with you before and begin to walk in tandem with that. Therefore, from today, my conversation must be creative. Do you understand that? We're talking about talking like God. God, God, God talks creatively. So when you talk, you must talk creatively. Somebody says, how will, you, how will things turn around in your finance? I declare it turn around now. It turn around now. Oh, how will it happen? I don't know. <laughs> Do you know how light came to be? God said it. That's it. So say it. Keep saying it. Let the word of the Lord be mighty in your mouth. Also, in mimicking God, say what, he, say what you want to see. You have no business telling us about how your life looks. We can see that it's not so beautiful. 
We can see that you don't have much money. If you do, it will be on your skin. It's not until you bleach that it shows money. There's a coolness money comes with. It's a fragrance. So you don't have to tell us. You can fake it all around. Use all the touchables on the social media. Instagram, touch it up. Snapchat, touch it up. But we see you, the real you every day. Come on, we know what you're going through. You don't need to tell us what you're going through. We are saying, begin to say what you put on Instagram. Can I explain that to you? Do you know that when people put pictures on Instagram and on social media, they, they put it in shades. They put the best of them. They put the best of them. And then they crop out the on good places. Maybe they snap a picture and there's a Volkswagen. We're gone. A Volkswagen. You know what they call? We call it Volkswagen B2. Behind them. They have a way of cropping the Volkswagen out. And then it's only them alone. Uh, and then they, they, they make it look good. What are they doing? They are putting a picture of what they want you to see. It is time to begin to also say the things you want to see. Make your life from your mouth. Your words are the creative human resource that God has given you. Therefore, you must use it well. You can't afford that it be latent. You must say it. Put it to work. Activate it. Start speaking. Not what you want to see. Not what you see presently, but what you want to see. What you want to see. I'm the greatest of all time. Praise God. The words from my mouth, sir. They are full of life and of fire. You know, those days people used to say, ah, Pisaio, he has mouth. I know personally I don't have mouth. But you know, I, I have a way that I conform people to hear what I want them to hear. I found scriptures like, my words shall be with grace, seasoned with salt. So I began to say in my words, they are with grace, seasoned with salt. I speak the word of life. I don't know anybody who hates salt or grace. <laughs> so if my words are with grace, seasoned with salt, you must like what I say. It's time for you to begin to say, I'm clothed with God's beauty. The garment of God is upon me. Ain't nobody ugly. It's the touch of God that makes a difference. Pray that God's touch will be upon you. Talk like God. Number two, and then what characteristics of God's talk? Speak to the situation, not about the situation. Speak expressly and clearly. I'm tired of people saying, <laughs> eh, God, God bless me. God, that's nonsense. We are the blessed of God. If you need money, ask for it specifically. Hello? If you need connection, ask for it. Ask for it. You need a job, ask for it. I, I, I remember many years ago, uh, I, myself and my spouse were, were believing God uh, for our for, 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 uh, for job. And we, we wrote down specifics. Specifics. We did not know any man. We did not know where the job would come from. But we started saying what we wanted. We wrote the salary. We wrote the numbers of the zeros. And that's what exactly happens. Listen, God and the word will conform to the principle God has put in place. It's time to speak. Don't just say, I have a job. I have a job. Nonsense. Now somebody is calling for an insurance job. You say, that's not the job I'm waiting for. But you said a job. When God speaks, it's distinct. It's clear. It's express. It tells you what it wants. And then you must speak your vision and your plan. I know you wrote down your vision and you have a vision book. But your vision is not supposed to be in your book. It's supposed to be in your mouth. Glory to God. It's time for us to have a vision mouth, not a vision book. Somebody say, you, you are arrogant. Tell them it's God. <laughs> it's the only thing I know. That is the building blocks I know. It's the resources I know to build my life I know that I'm going to the nations of the world with the word of God. I know that I speak the word of purpose. I know that I empower men to become all that God has in mind at their creation. I know that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I know that whoever has an encounter with me, they are energized of the spirit. I know that an encounter with me is an encounter with God because I'm a God carrier. I'm a difference maker. I'm a life speaker. You speak transformation before it happens. You must learn to do that. Speak life. And then... Because that's important. When Jesus was on the earth, they were astonished. You know what? He spoke with authority. Listen, when you speak like God, people are going to look at you and say, wow. <laughs> it's either he knows what we don't know, or he's just an arrogant fool. But that's not, that's fine. <laughs> they look at Jesus and they say the same thing. But you know, what is attracting to people is also what will repair certain people. You understand that? The Pharisees did not like Jesus. They're sad to see. Someone says, so sad to see. That's the word sad to see, sir. You know, they were, so, they were just a bunch of sad folks. <laughs> but Jesus did not allow what they said to affect. They hated him. But what they hated him for was what people liked him for. The way he spoke. Let me show you that from scriptures. Mark 1, 22. 
Matthew 7, 29. Mark 1, 22. And the Bible said they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority. Not as the scribes. Perhaps the scribes were only saying things like, maybe it will happen. But this man was speaking with all audacity and authority. You must learn to speak that same way about your life. Huh? Let it be the foundation of your life. Speak like God. Number two, study the life of Christ. How can I talk like God? By studying the life of Christ. Jesus is the full expression of the image and the person of God. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible told us that. He is the perfect representation of God on the earth. Therefore no man has seen God and no man will ever see God. The Bible told us that man, God became flesh. The word became flesh. That was God. It became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So for me to know how God talks, I must study the flesh of God. The flesh of God. That means the time and the period when God was in the flesh. How did God speak to the Pharisees? When Jesus faced a challenging situation, how did he do it? When Jesus saw the woman at the pool by the well, what did Jesus say in John chapter 4? When Jesus saw that man by the pool, by the pool, who has been there for many years, how did Jesus speak? When Jesus healed, how did Jesus speak? He spoke with authority. When you study how Jesus speaks, and I want to challenge you to read the synoptic gospels. Because in it you will find out God operates. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that's the synoptic gospel. You will see the life of Jesus, and you'll be able to pattern your life after him. Because that is what this is about. Don't forget about mimicking God. I'll be speaking next week about that concept of me making God. I'm going to share deeper into that revelation of truth. But I want you to know that it is time to converse the way God's converse. Christ's words are characterized. When you look at the life words of Christ, they are characterized by truth, by love, and by grace. Jesus always speaks the truth. No scope. You know what we call it? Lie? Lies now? You know when somebody is close to you and is lying? You won't tell the person the person is lying. You say, ah, you're just scoping them. <laughs> Why? Because of friendship. Actually, what the guy is doing is he's lying. You understand that? But you will not find a lie with God. Jesus spoke truth every time. Jesus spoke the mind of God every time. Therefore, there must be a relationship. A thinking like God before you can speak the mind of God. I think we said that last week. So, it's one that leads to the other. So, you must understand. You have a clear-cut understanding of God. Number four, you must speak in love. Love is the motivation. Behind everything God does, love. Love is the motivation. Love is the primary motivation of God's word. God, the word, even the word came into this word, was motivated by love. In the beginning, he came. Why did he come? Why did he become flesh according to John chapter 1? John 3 told us that. God so loved the word that he gave. So it was love that made God give. Jesus might have wanted to come to the heart, but if God did not permit him, he would not have gone. But love ensured that God permitted so everything God does and says, he says in love. Bible told us in Ephesians chapter 1, 5, Ephesians 5, 1 or 2. Follow God's example, therefore as dearly loved children. And walk in the way of love. Praise God. Bible says walk in the way of love. Love is not a name you call a person. Love is something they see in you. People must see that we are love beings. We are love breeds. The love of God must be what moves us. Bible told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Now remain all these, faith, love, and hope. And the greatest of these, Scripture says, is love. Is love. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you. God operates. God deals with us. Even in his love. And then number four. Uh, which is finally number four, God speaks in faith. God speaks in faith. God's primary language of communication is faith. The more we speak in faith, the more of God we become. The more you understand the faith life, the faith walk, the more like God you become. God speaks in faith. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be that more, be that cast to the sea, I shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in his heart, the Bible says, shall receive whatsoever he says. Receiving is by believing. Therefore, before God spoke, light be. God believed it in his heart. Do you understand that? He believed in his heart and then he said, Therefore, for your vision to come to pass, the first pass, the first test you must pass, 
I beg your pardon, the first test you must pass is that you must first of all believe it in your heart. Oh, so you are sick. I am the healed of God. Don't just say it. You believe it. Oh, money comes to me. Money answers to me. Don't say that. You believe it. Oh, I'm taking the word of the Lord to the nations. Don't just say it because somebody said it. Do you believe it? It is what you believe and you say that works. So what you say needs a thing to work with. And that thing is your faith. It's your believing. You must first of all believe. And then what you believe must cause you to even speak. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. Bible says, it calls the things that be not as though they were. Can we take a faith break right now, right here? Can you just begin to say the things you believe in your life? Begin to say them out. The things you believe. A faith break. I'm not done with the message. I just want to take a faith break. I want you to begin to speak like God. Creatively. Creatively into your life. I'm a world transformer. Glory to God. I'm a change agent. Hallelujah. Things fall in line to me in pleasant places. Oh, this is the best days of my life. My spirit is growing in lips and bound. I receive revelation of the truth. Oh, things fall in line to me in pleasant places. I'm not broke. I'm rich. I'm rich. Money answers to me. From the south, the west, the north, the east, angels are bringing treasures to me. I have access to the treasure house of God's wisdom. Glory to God. <laughs> to the treasure house of God's power. Hallelujah. 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 One more minute. One more minute. Uh, keep speaking. Uh, keep speaking. Speak the word of life. Uh, create your word. Create your word. Uh, create your word. Uh, I'm the yield of God. I'm whole. I'm the yield of God. I'm whole. Uh, oh, no infirmity can stay here. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, by his stripes, I'm healed. Uh, hallelujah. He himself bore my infirmities. Uh, he was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement for my peace was upon him. Hallelujah. I'm saying God's word after him. Uh, I'm making God. See my life. Uh, it's a good example of a glorious life. Uh, see my life. It's a good example of a powerful life. Uh, God is working in me for me and through me. God is working with me. Glory to God. I'm equipped with power. I'm equipped with grace. I'm equipped with joy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm the anointed of God. I'm anointed. Everywhere I go, I do good. My words, they are with great, seasoned with salt. Hallelujah. People love me. People come to me. I have destiny helpers. Kingdom connection is mine. In the name of Jesus. Oh, people may say there is a casting down. For me, there is a lifting. There is a lifting. Uh, hallelujah. God takes me by the hand and he lifts me up. Uh, I know promotion comes from him. Uh, for those who will increase in post-COVID, uh, I'm one of them. Uh, I believe my time of greatness has come. Uh, I believe my time of succor is now. Uh, I believe my time of help is now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory <laughs> to Kami, kami, toto siataya. <laughs> Sweet God, word after him. <laughs> Hallelujah, talk like God. Hallelujah. Change your word, change your word, change your life. Change your word, change your life. Change your word, change your life. I know no sandana chia. Kelua taya. Glory to God. Glory to God. How do you feel? Speaking like God. Something must have quickened in your spirit. Something must have been made alive in you. You cannot speak God's word and be depressed. You can't speak God's word and feel alone. Why? Because there is a tangibility of life that comes to you. Why? Because something is released even to back you up. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody says, what if I say that nothing happens? Glory to God. That's why you say it. You keep saying it. Mark eleven fourteen. Jesus looked at the fig tree. He said, no one eat this of this fig tree again. He didn't go back. I start saying, it will it happen? When you say it, you take your mind off it. You just keep saying it. That's your own vision. You speak like God. Why? Because it will happen. It didn't happen immediately with the fig tree. But those who went back the next day, Peter said, Jesus, say the fig tree with us. <laughs> you know who was surprised? The person who did not speak the word. Jesus who spoke the word was not surprised. People may be surprised at how your life will pan out, but you will be thankful because you are saying it expectantly. So when it pan out that way, you are not surprised. You are only giving thanks to God. Glory to God. Hey, the world may be surprised. We are always living in thanks. Glory to God. Follow his example. Let's faith speak. Agree with God's word. Some of us need to start over. How do you learn to speak like God? Study how God spoke. Study how Jesus spoke. Study how the disciples and the prophets 
spoke, let their words become your words until you learn to use your own words correctly. Do you get that? <laughs> let their word become your words until you now learn to use your own word correctly. So first of all, mimic God. <laughs> mimic God. Say only what God says. After that time, it would have changed your vocabulary. After a while, your mind, your soul would have been renewed. Four twenty-three of Ephesians. After a while, Romans 12, 2 would have happened to you. And then you will be able to speak your own word in the right way. When it comes to healing, God says you are healed. I don't, need, I don't know how you feel right now. In the here and in the now. But speak God's word. I'm the healed of God. Say, I take away. I will not put any of the plague on Egypt upon you. <laughs> Someone said, I, I was coughing. And then, and then the cough was, was looking like COVID. I knew I didn't travel out. I, I, but I knew the cough was similar as if it was dry. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I was telling myself, take water. This cough is becoming dry. We'll take water. I, I, I said, I, I didn't travel out. I, I didn't expose myself. I've never met someone who traveled out. So I knew it was not COVID. It was the devil sitting at me on me and making me fearful. So I began to say the word of God. And as you sit on the word and dwell on the word concerning healing, you just see that thing just leave you. Why? Because he knows that here he has no continuous city. So we'll go and look for another. <laughs> Tell somebody, make your life. Make your life a danger zone. A danger zone for the devil. Let him keep off. When I was growing up in Ibada, those days, they say, we, are, we were of dogs. Keep off. Some of those houses where we grew up, we discovered they didn't have any dog. They didn't have any dog. Some of them only have dogs that were castrated local dogs who, who, who have been trained to just roar. Or, or what, what happens to dogs? Do they roar or what? Bark in a way that seems like they have imported dogs. <laughs> So look at dogs' backs, but we can't see the wall because the walls were tall. So we kept off. Some of them had good mango trees, but we kept off. We kept off because it's written there. Keep off. Beware of dogs. Guided by a dog. Sometimes you need to say some things. Because those words were what kept us off. Some people's word will keep, will let the devil get out of their life. The devil will know this is not a zone to stay. When you keep saying those words, demons will not come and alight. We, they don't alight. Flies don't alight on all substance. As you speak the word of God, you set your life on fire. It is the way to speak. It is time for us to learn to speak like God. You may not learn it overnight, but if you continue to say it, you will eventually become it. Again, I just feel like giving you another minute to speak like God. To speak like God. But don't run to speak. Close your eyes, wherever you are watching us from, on your tablet, on your phone, on your system, walking on the road. I want you to take a moment. Take a moment. Be calm. Be calm in your spirit. Be calm in your mind. And begin to look at the vision, the plan God has communicated with you. Look at your heart desires. See them. First of all, see them. Because, you know, first thing first, there must first be a sighting in the act. A sighting. With the eye of the spirit that causes a believing. And it is what you believe that you will now begin to speak for. So I want you to take a travel. Take a sojourn in the realm of the spirit. And begin to see. Don't let anybody distract you right now. You can have that gas. <laughs> Don't let anything distract you right now. Take a journey. Take a journey in faith. Take a journey in faith. Right now, yeah. Yeah, you can see that call. You can see your ministry. You can see that business. You can see the thriving. You can see the help you are offering in the nations of the world. You can see the impact in your community. As you see it right now, don't just see it. Don't just see it. I want you to now make your mouth your vision mouth, not a vision book. And begin to call them forth. Begin to speak them. Begin to call them forth. I walk in the reality of the word of God. Yes. I walk in the reality of my vision. What is your vision? Taking the word of God to the nation. What is your vision? Being a, be, being a, a, a mold, a mode of revival, an example of revival in the world. What is your vision? A world-renowned entrepreneur, a digital entrepreneur. That's what God has called you for. Begin to call it for. You are called to the social marketing world. Begin to call it for. I built the best brand company in Nigeria. Oh, I built the best brand company in West Africa. 
Nigeria is too small. West Africa cannot continue. It's time to, we can't play small anymore. It's time to play big. I built the best branding company in the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a voice of transformation in the nations of the world. I'm an instrument of purpose and of change and of revival in the nations of the world. Oh, I am richer. I am richer. I have become a philanthropist. I give help to people. I attract help. Yes, kingdom connection comes to me. I do not lack the gift of men. Come on. Come on. Keep speaking. Don't stop. This is the most important part of a service. I'm giving you an opportunity to mimic God, to talk like God. Come on. Come on. That's the way God speaks. Sir. That's the way God speaks. Wherever you are listening, wherever you are, just keep speaking. Don't stop speaking. It's called those things forth. Call those, it's called the things that be not as though they were. And what happened? They became. Glory to God. Some things are becoming right now. Yes, some visions are becoming right now. Some homes are becoming right now. Some relationships are becoming right now. That's it, that's it. Some lives are being molded right now. Some graces are being released right now. Some gifts of the Spirit are being released right now. <laughs> because you are saying it, because you are saying it, you are calling them forth. Glory to God. Glory to God. Talk like God. Talk with authority. Talk with audacity. Talk in line with the Word of God. Talk. Oh, yes, talk. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Daddy, thank you for your word. Because your word gives light and understanding even unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come tonight. And we have learned at your feet. Father, we are not just people who hear. Because it is not the areas of the world that are blessed, but the doers of it. Father, grace to do. Grace to perform. Grace to stay in line with your word. Let it be released unto us. We declare it's a new season. It's a new day. Glory to your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're listening to me and you have never given your life to Jesus, what we say to you is still green and blue. It's like we're saying things that you are not conversant with. I want to say to you that Jesus many years ago died on the cross of Calvary. He was last stricken for you. And he was not doing all of that because it was easy. But he saw your image. And he thought you are worth dying for. Why? Because in him alone is life and light. He alone is the one who can give purpose and direction to your life. He wants to breathe his name and his life even upon your life. He wants you to exchange the darkness you are walking in with his light. He wants you to walk with meaning and purpose. If you are under the sound of my voice. And you have given your life to Jesus. I want you to put your hand even on your heart. If you have not. And you are saying, Fisayo. I want this day to be that day. That my life turn around. I want you to also join them. Put your hand on your heart. Put it on your chest. I would like to pray with you. There is so much rejoicing because of this commitment to God tonight. I want you to put your hand on your chest. I want you to say these prayers with me. Everlasting Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross of Calvary for my son. I believe that I am a sinner. I confess my sins. And I declare I confess the name Jesus and the person of Jesus. And I declare that Jesus is Lord. I ask Jesus to come into my heart. To live in my heart. And I pray right now, even for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Spirit come into my life. Dwell in me. Let the promised one come. Jesus baptized in the Spirit. Baptize me. Even now. Thank you Lord Jesus. I'm a new creature. All things are past. And all things are new. You have said that prayer, believe it, and you have confessed it. It's the best days of your life. I want you to know that God is with you. God is listening to you. And God has moved in into your life and into your family. It's the best decision you can make. And I want you to rejoice. If you make that decision, you can get in touch with that number on your screen. You can send us a chat. You can call us. Or you can send a message to that email, even on the screen right now. If you need an email address, it is the Energized Church. The Energized Church at gmail.com. We'd like to be part of your Christian journey and your life story because I know that greatness is in you. Take care of yourself. I'd like to move you even to the other side for the remaining part of the service. God bless you.